Hello, welcome to my third video in a series of videos dealing with Hinkaku. Hinkaku is the newly released homebrew enabler for the PS TV and the PS Vita. Now in my first video I showed you guys how to install Hinkaku as well as Molecular Shell. It was real simple to do. If you haven't done that yet, you will need to do that to follow the tutorial I'm about to do in this video. It was real simple to do, just refer to my first video. Now I've already done that, so I'm going to go into Molecular Shell. This video I'm going to be dealing with actually installing Homebrew. So, we're going to come into Molecular Shell. We'll need a PC with an FTP client on it to do this. Now, once we're in Molecular Shell, we want to turn on the FTP server. You do that by hitting Select. Once you've done that, you're going to want to come over to your computer. And you're going to want to use your favorite FTP client to log in to your PS Vita. I've done so. I'm going to bring up the magnifier for you so you can actually see. Here, this side is your PS Vita. Now I've also installed, um, I've also copied over my VPKs straight to my desktop. Uh, VPKs are homebrew files. They're the files you're going to be installing. What they are, they're basically archives, zip files for PS Vita stuff. They contain homebrew. So I'm going to open this. Now I have a whitelister VPK, SNES 9X for Vita VPK, and an SNES ROM to show you that the, it does indeed work. Now, what I'm going to do is come over here and I'm going to go to UX0. I'm just going to copy this stuff over to the root. You can do it any way you like. There are different ways for different things, but for what I'm doing, this is going to work and it's simple to show you. So I'm copying these over. Yes, I'm going to overwrite them. Progress. Okay, we're done here. Now we can come back. Go ahead and close this out. Now, and go ahead and come back to our Vita TV. And hit circle. Close your FTP. Now we copied it to UX0. You have to remember where you copied your stuff. So you're going to go into that directory. You're going to go down. As you can see, the VPKs are purple. Now, all you do is you highlight the one you want. It'll show up in green and you press X. That'll allow you to install it. Hit yes, X again to say yes. Okay, I am also going to install the whitelister VPK. X to confirm and then X to confirm again. And that is it. Now all we have to do is back out of this. So hit home. Go ahead and close that. Now you will see we have two new bubbles on our live area. This is the whitelist that we installed and this is our SNES emulator that we installed. What this whitelist does is it's it overwrites that file for you like I showed in my second video. That's why I went ahead and installed that one. You can do it the way I did it in my second video or you can install it this way. You grab the whitelist VPK and just run this every time you turn the system off and on. There's no truly permanent patch for the whitelist. But what I'm gonna show you is I'm gonna show you the SNES emulator to show you that it indeed does run. Crazy options. Okay, everything's right. You're going to want to find where you put your game. Like I said, I could have put it somewhere neater, somewhere better. Some emulators may require a certain file path, but this works fine. So, now, we've, now I've showed you how to install Hinkaku, how to install your whitelist again on 3.6, as well as how to actually install Homebrew now that we have a native Vita hack away in with FTP and all that good stuff. But I will be doing other videos as well. I think the next video, what I'm going to try and tackle is showing you how to do the Vita half byte loader install. It's not as simple as what I just showed you. It's a little different and you guys could probably use a little help with that.
So again, thanks for watching. Uh, check out PlayStationHacks.it for all your PlayStation hacks and modding needs.